hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'm doing question 3.2 this is from the november 2020 paper one matric final exam i did post the 3.1 video earlier so if you want to see 3.1 you can go look back at that one for 3.2 this is a five mark question we can see there and this one is definitely more difficult than 3.1 i would say that this is possibly not problem solving but definitely a complex question so here they're saying if and again they're using sigma notation now we need to remember that sigma notation means the sum of so as soon as we see sigma we know that we are talking about the sum so we are talking about a series remember a series is where you have a number pattern where the terms are added together so here we're talking about sigma, the sum. So they're saying from where k is equal to p, we'll talk about that just now, to infinity. So they are talking about the sum to infinity over here. So now they've given us the general formula, which is 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus k. And we can see that there we have the k that they're talking about. Now what this k equals p at the bottom of the sigma notation means is that p is the value of k in your first term. In your second term, the value of k is going to be p plus 1. In your third term, the value of k is going to be p plus 2. So each time you start with p for your first term, and for each consecutive term, you add 1 to that first k value. All right, so then that is going to infinity, like we already said, and they are saying that the sum is actually 2 over 9. So they have effectively given us here that the sum to infinity of this series is 2 over 9. Now just a reminder, this formula is on the formula sheet. Sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. And they are telling us that that is equal to 2 over 9. Now what they're wanting us to calculate in this question is the value of p, which is why I've written it here on the side. So we need to calculate the value of p. Now guys, the value of p is going to come in where we are actually calculating our three terms, our first three terms. Now I suggest that you actually do that whenever you have a sigma notation question, that you calculate your first three terms always. Usually you will also get a mark or two just for doing that, even if you don't know how to go further. So here we're going to have 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus p that's going to be term 1 our second term is going to be 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus but now actually let me undo that because now we are not just subtracting k we are subtracting k which is now actually p plus 1 so we would have to put that in brackets so let's quickly simplify that because we can simplify it it's going to be 2 minus p minus 1, and that can be further simplified to 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 is just 1, so this is going to be 1 minus p. All right, so that's term 2. Term 3, we're going to do a similar thing. We are going to take the general formula that they gave us, but now we're going to sub in p plus 2 for our k value. Remember, for your first term, your k value is p. For your second term, your k value is one more, p plus 1. And for your third term, your k value is going to be one more than the previous term, so p plus 2. Okay, so now <clears throat> we have 4 times 3 to the 2 minus p minus 2, which we can again simplify, and that is going to give us 4 times 3 to the power of negative p, because 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, if we list these terms next to each other, this is important, guys, because we need to now identify our a value and our r value so that we can put it into this formula, which will allow us to calculate p. So we have the first term is that then, because it's a series, we would have to plus our terms. So the next term is going to be 3 to the 1 minus p like that. And the next term is going to be 4 times 3 to the negative p. Plus, we would then add a whole bunch of them together. But the first three is all we need. Now, guys, if you are having trouble with actually seeing what your ratio is here, remember to get the ratio, you can always take term 2 over term 1, or term 3 over term 2. In this case, I think it would be easier to do term 3 over term 2. So let's do that. We're going to say 4 times 3 to the negative p 
divided by 4 times 3 to the 1 minus p. Okay, we can see straight away that the 4s can cancel out, which is good. So we're left with two powers here that have the same bases. And hopefully we remember what we do when we are dividing powers with the same bases. You are going to take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So this is going to be, let me actually just carry on here underneath. We're going to keep that same base of 3. We're going to take the top exponent, which is negative p. We are going to minus the whole bottom exponent. I'm putting it in brackets because it consists of more than one term. I'm getting 3 to the negative p minus 1 plus p. And there we see that the p's in this case are going to cancel out because negative p plus p is 0. So we are left with 3 to the negative 1, which is in fact a third. Okay, so there we got the ratio of 1 over 3. Some of you might be able to identify it just by looking at term 1, 2, and 3, in which case it's perfectly fine. You can just use it from there. But if you are unable to see it from looking at those terms, that's also okay. You can always fall back on this formula. Finding the ratio of any geometric series, you would have to take one term divided by the term before. Okay, now we are actually going to take this formula from up there. I'm going to rewrite it. We have that a over, oh, that's a bit of a skew line, a over 1 minus r is equal to 2 over 9. Now, I am running out of space, so I'm just going to do it on the side here. Our a value, we remember that your a value is always your first term. So the first term in this case was 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus p. That is now going to be over 1 minus the ratio, which is a third, and that is equal to 2 over 9. Now, guys, you are allowed to use your calculator to help you with the next few steps. So, for example, here at the bottom of my fraction in my denominator, I have 1 minus a third. That is negative 2 thirds. And what I'm then going to do is to get rid of this negative 2 thirds at the bottom, I'm going to multiply the other side by it. So, in your calculator, you can type 2 over 9 multiplied by negative 2 over 3. When you do that, you are going to get the answer of 4 over 27. So you're actually going to be left with this. 4 times 3 to the 2 minus p is equal to 4 over 27. You can do it in multiple steps if you want to, but you can also just do that all in one step on the calculator. Now, next up, you need to get rid of this 4. Because I'm multiplying by 4 on this side, I'm going to divide the other side by 4. So I'm going to say 4 over 27 divided by 4. And I'm going to be left with 1 over 27 from there. So we're going to have 3 to the 2 minus p is 1 over 27. Now this is an exponential equation. Remember, when you have an exponential equation, you need to have the same base on both sides so that you can make the exponents equal to each other. So 1 over 27, if you want to write that with the same base than what we have on the left-hand side, which is a 3, that is going to be 3 to the power of negative 3 which now means that we have the same bases. So if 4, 3 to the 2 minus p to be equal to 3 to the negative 3, those two exponents would have to be equal to each other as well. So there we go. Very easy to solve this. I'm just going to move this negative p over to the other side where it will become a positive p. And this negative 3, when I move it to that side, is going to become plus 3. So I'm going to be left with 2 plus this 3, which I'm moving, which is going to be 5, and equal to p on the other side. So 5 is equal to p, or if you want to write it the other way around, p is equal to 5. There we have it, guys. Like I said, this is quite a complicated question. It is a 5 mark question. In terms of mark allocation, just to give you an idea of what you would get marks for, you would get a mark for getting to the expression of your first term, then you would get a mark for actually substituting your a and your p and your sum to infinity values. So only over here. So unfortunately, all of this work would not earn you any marks, which is unfortunate. But like I said, you could actually do this kind of by inspection. 
or yeah you can always fall back on this formula if you need to the next step or the next mark would be for getting to that step that simplification step basically getting to 4 over 27 this the next mark would be for getting your basis to be equal and then the fifth and final mark is for your final answer all right guys thank you so much for joining if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more